Welcome back. In this chapter, we will look at arrays in C. The first question to ask is, why do we need arrays? So let's assume we have a program, right? We have to write a program which will get 10 numbers from the user and print them. So the program would look something like this. Hash include stdr.h int main. And then we'll declare 10 numbers, n1, n2, n3, n4, n5, n6, n7, n8, n9, n10. So scan up for all the 10 percentage D because they are integers and we give the address where the numbers get stored. After that, we print these numbers from 1 to 10. So this is a simple program. So if at all the user requirement is get 100 numbers from the user and then print the 100 numbers, right? The program becomes kind of little clumsy, right? You'll have 100 variables here and read all the 100 variables using scanf. A huge scanf will be there. And finally, you'll have a printf with 100 numbers. So these kind of problems are much easier to solve using arrays rather than using normal variables. So let's see how to solve them with arrays. So array is a contiguous space for items of same data type. For example, we talked about 10 integers n1, n2, n3, n4, n5, n6, n7, n8, n9, and n10. So here with an array, you can declare 10 arrays as contiguous elements, right? Um, with index starting from 0 to 9. So 10 elements are allocated. Each one is an integer, right? So array length will be size of integer, which is 10. Um, sorry, size of integer, let's assume as 4. 4 into 10 elements, 40 elements will be what will be the size of the array. 40 bytes will be the size of this array. Now the size of the array cannot be changed after it is declared. Now let's look at the. So this is the syntax for arrays, declaring an array, int c of 10, right? So c has totally 10 elements. Now that's the 10 element array that we are talking about here on the right side. Now each and every element can be accessed directly using c of 5, that would 3, 4, 5. So it will be the sixth element when you give c of 5. So once you declare this array, int c of 10, uh, if size of integer is 4, 40 bytes of memory will be allocated continuously, right? It's consecutive memories which will be allocated. And uh, the array name is this, which is C in this particular case. So note, if you have declared int C of 10, the value at C of 10 is invalid, right? Because the index starts at 0 to 9, there is no C of 10. Many of the beginners make this mistake. There is no C of 10. C of 0 to C of 9 are the valid numbers that you can access. Here we will use a tool called Python Tutor instead of Online GDB. So the difference between Python Tutor and Online GDB is Python Tutor helps you to visualize the code step by step. The disadvantage in Python Tutor is it does not do scan up or get care. You can just read the, I mean, read and print the values. You have to directly initialize the values in Python Tutor. So pythontutor.com, so visualize mode. So I've selected C as the language. Let me visualize the execution now to see how Python Tutor works and this particular program works. So in Python Tutor, you can see how the memory is allocated. 10 integers are allocated here. So now we'll go step by step into the code to see what happens. So int c of 10, so 10 element array is declared, 0 to 9 are the indices, you will see the indices here. c of 0 is 4, so this first element is initialized to 4, c of 1 is 17, c of 9 is minus 20, so I'm initializing. Look at it, all these values are junk, um, you won't know what will get printed if you print any of these values. So now when we print the values from these three, this is the screen. So here you will see that 4, 17 and minus 20 get displayed. So this is how array works, right? Now, if you look at it again, this printf, you might be wondering, what is the advantage of this, right? So one is instead of declaring 10 variables, we have declared it as C of 10, right? But still we are printing individual elements instead of N1, N2, N3. We are doing a printf of the same, right? So earlier we talked about 100 elements. Here also, again, it looks like 100 elements have to be accessed one by one. Luckily with loops, this becomes, arrays become more powerful. So let's look at this program. Int c of 10, integer i. 
So for i is 0, i less than 10 plus plus i. So this loop runs from 0 to 9, right? All the values from 0 to 9. When the value of i is 10, it comes out of the loop. What we are doing is we are initializing the value. So c of 0 will be 0, c of 1 will be 1, c of 2 will be 2, right? We are just initializing the array and then we are printing the array, right? So element at index 0, element at index 1, index 2, each of these elements we are printing here. So let's look at this in action. So first I am doing for i is equal to 0. So 10 element has been allocated, space for integer has been allocated. Now let's look at it. So i is 0 now and c of i is 0. i is 1, c of i is 1. i is 2, c of i is 2. i is 3, c of i is 3. Right? So I am initializing each and every element like that in this for loop. So now all the elements are initialized. So i is 9 and it becomes 10. So it comes out of the loop. So when i is 10, 10 is not less than 10. So it comes out of the loop. We are now printing the elements, so you can see that we are printing each of these elements. It gets printed in this. I didn't give a backslash n. That's why it's all coming in the same line. But otherwise, here I should have given a backslash n. But this explains how the looping works, how array initialization works. So in this case, I am doing 10 printf's, but if you look at it, um, all I am doing is a simple for loop. So instead of doing printf percentage d n1 or percentage d percentage d percentage d 10 percentage d's i am doing 1 percentage d and i am actually printing the element at that index so this is the power of array especially when it's used with loops so this is a simple program to find the size of this array how many bytes of memory have been allocated so i am doing printf percentage d percentage d first i'll print the size of int so if the size of int is 2, so 2 into 10, 20 bytes will be allocated. If size of int is 4, 4 into 10, 40 bytes will be allocated. So if you look at it here, size of int is 4 bytes. So 40 bytes of memory have been allocated for this particular array. So now let's look at some terminology in arrays. So the base address is where the array is actually stored. The base address is represented using the name of the array. The base address is same as the address of the first element of the array. And the size of the array or the address cannot be changed. Let's look at what are these, right? So this is the array we earlier declared, right? So C of 10. The base address is nothing but where this array is stored. So this array is stored somewhere in the RAM, right? So what is this address? Where is it, right? That's what is called as a base array, base address. So whenever you want to print the base address, you can, if you print print a percentage x c, it will print this base address. And base address is same as the first element of the array, which you can already see, right? So c of 0, if you want the address of c of 0, we know that we have to give this ampersand symbol. We have used it in scanf, right? It's very similarly. So here as well, we can use um, that ampersand symbol c of 0 will give you the address of this particular element or if you directly use C, right, which will also give the address. So both of these are the same. Both will give the base address. So now let's look at a simple program. In this program, we will print the size of this array and the base address of the array. We will print it in both the formats, right? So we will print it as C. We will also print it as ampersand C of 0. So in this case, Percentage x, which is the hexadecimal printing, is normally used whenever you want to print an address. So we will use this extensively moving forward. So now let's look at this program int c of 10. Size of array. We are printing the size of array. Um, we are printing the size of int. We are printing the size of array. We are printing the base address of the array and address of the first element. So if you look at the output here, size of integer is 4, size of array is 40, which we have already seen. Base address, it's giving an address here, FF000BC0. And address of first element is FF000BC0, right? So these two are the same when you look at it. So that's why we say that the size of the address of the first element of the array is same as the size of the array. So this is how it works. Also note that during the runtime of the program, you cannot change this 10. Right? So if 10 elements have been allocated, you cannot change it to 20 or 30. Throughout the length of this program, 
the size of the array remains the same. For a normal variable, integer i equal to 3, you can initialize it directly. Very similarly, for an array as well, you can initialize it during declaration. So int n of 5 is equal to open flower bracket 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 will make n of 0 will be 1, n of 1 will be 2, n of 2 will be 3, n of 3 will be 4, n of 4 will be 5, right? It automatically initializes it. So we have already seen how to initialize using a for loop. This is how you initialize during declaration. So sometimes if you give n of 5 equal to 1, right? The first element gets initialized. See, n of 0 will become 1. Remaining will become zeros automatically, right? So this is another way to initialize. Sometimes you can even ignore the size. So n of, you don't give anything. But in that case, you have to initialize it here. Um, so C will count the number of elements here. Okay, five elements are there. So it will automatically look at it as int n of 5 and allocate 20 bytes of memory. Right, so similar to integer for character as well, you can initialize. So care um, like this equal to T-E-A-C-H, right? So it will allocate five bytes of memory because five elements, each element is one byte of memory. So let's look at this example. Char character array equal to T-E-A-C-H. Look at the single quotes, right? That means it's a character. So printf percentage D percentage D size of character and size of C. So this is how it stores in the memory T-E-A-C-H and one and five. That is size of character is 1 and totally 5 bytes of memory have been allocated. So let's look at this program now. Uh, we have an integer n of 10 declared where the first 5 elements are initialized, the remaining are not initialized so they will become zeros. Then we have a floating point array where there are 10 elements again declared 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. 6 elements are initialized and remaining 4 are not initialized. We have a character array where we have initialized with T, E, A, right? The ASCII value corresponding to lowercase a is 97. So we are using uh, directly the integer. And then C is 99, ASCII value is 99. So whether you give A and C or 97 and 99, both the cases it will work, it is the same. So and then we have an integer i. And for i is equal to 0, i less than 10 plus plus i. Right and printing this is the index i on index i. What is the integer available? What is the floating point variable available? I am printing for one precision and then what is the character available? Percentage c. Let's run this program. So you'll see the output here index 0, you have a value of 1 and then 0 0.1 and you have t. Index 1, you have value of 2, which is here. 0 0.2 and e, right? So index 3, it is value of 3, 0 0.3. And given that I'm printing this 97 with the percentage C, it converts to the ASCII value and prints the value A. Very similarly, index 4, 0 0.4, it's taking the value C, right? So at 99, it is the value C. So ASCII value of 99 is C. When we are doing percentage C, it converts it to ASCII of this um, 99 and prints the letter C. That's how this program works. You look at it, the last set of characters, there is nothing here because zero ASCII value of zero is nothing, right? So it doesn't print anything here. So, so far we saw one dimensional arrays. Next, we will look at 2D arrays in the next chapter.